Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. All right, guys, we're back. We are back. And uh, I couldn't be happier because I have uh, an amazing guest who uh, is not uh, doing the radio part, who is here with me, uh, video. So if you guys are uh, fans of Joe Reichel, you can um, see her uh, live. Uh, hey. you know. Joe Reichel, how you doing, buddy? I'm great. How are you doing? All right. Um, this is here. Usually I, I talk about Dow with a turtle and I talk about your courses and everything. But let me yeah. uh, let me have you um, tell people a little bit about what uh, Joe Reichel does and how you got there. Absolutely. Yeah. So Dow the Turtle is my business. Uh, I started about 20 plus years ago and my business is founded on self-discovery, my own. That's how it began. I thought it was your brother's. <laughs> my brother came up with the name. You came up with the name. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. My brother calls me Turtle because I, I do go my own path and my own pace. <laughs> I so, love that. <laughs> so, actually, I just came that up. Uh, I brought that up. You uh, you inspire me for sure with these clever things. But it's true. It's like like we've said, everyone's pace is is their own. It's their own journey, and really, that's what I'm supporting. You know, in my business, it's supporting. You know, a healer actually holds space for someone to heal themselves because only you know what it is you need. Um, and it kind of leads into the topic I had today of knowing what it is you need. It's asking yourself questions. And honestly, I've been struggling with this for a while. I um, When I divorced, it was after 18 years of marriage, 18 plus or minus 18. years. Of well, let me just be for the audience. Let me just uh, yeah. make sure. We're talking about what you need as far as a partner. Sorry. It's, no, it's, uh, no, what you need for yourself. So for your, oh, to be okay with yourself before you meet somebody. Is that kind of? Kind of. I mean, kind of. Honestly, you can be in a relationship and it's really, it's, thank you. You're so good at clar helping clarify. So it's really just, you know, you can be in a relationship, but not know what you want or need from that relationship. So true. Yeah. You know, yourself. You know, like I, after I divorced after 18 years, I had no clue what it is, like who I was about, you know, what I wanted. I, you know, still times I'm like, what is it I want, you know? And, and it's funny because everyone's like, oh, you have a clean slate. You can do anything you want. Well, you know, like you go into a Chinese restaurant and there's like <laughs> with too many choices. This is That's how five I pages. Felt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, no, no, too much, you know, and it, it's overwhelming. Overload. Yeah. Yeah. And it gets scary because you, you don't want to, you don't want to make the wrong choices. So in my Dow of the Turtle and in my discovery of self and that I'm constantly, I, I, my brother calls me my own hobby because I'm constantly just curious about who I am and where I'm going. That's so a good thing. It, it really is. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, let me get back to, cause I was going on a rant. Yeah. Sorry. I took you off topic. Sorry yeah. about that. No, we're good at that. So, uh, you, were, so you were stopping. So, so at 18 years you find right. yourself. Yeah. So it's, it's any relationship it's, you know, coming out of a divorce and, and wondering where it is you want to go. Thank you. So in Dow the turtle, the big thing I learned in my path and I, I help my clients with is knowing whatever choice you make, you can always course correct it. The worst thing you can do is not make a choice at all out of fear. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That was the huge thing for me because I remember one time in counseling, I told my counselor, I'm afraid to make choices for myself. I'm going to make the wrong choices based on my experiences in my marriage. Again, great. Marriage. Like still love my ex-husband. We're just not meant for each other. So it's not bashing him, but she asked me, well, give me an example. And I said, okay, we live in a, Vermont. We live near a ski area. I wanted this great 1970s rancher that was in structurally beautiful condition, but was outdated. My husband said, well, we live in Vermont. I don't want to live in a neighborhood. I want to move out. And so we moved into this very isolated area, big, beautiful, new home, all that. Well, I'll be honest with you, we had lost the home because we bought it at that the crash, you know? Oh, 2008, right? Yeah, exactly. And my counselor looked at me and said, you made the right decision. You just didn't trust yourself to say, you know what? 
both these houses are all off. We need to look for something else and come to a joint decision. She said, you made the right decision. You just didn't stick with it and trust yourself. And I'm, I'm so, confused. Wait, do you not stick yeah. to your guns? What, what I'm confused. exactly. Yeah. So she's what she ultimately was saying is you made the right decision wanting to buy a hundred and eighty dollar home that was at the base of a ski mountain in a resort town that you can then fix up instead of buying a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar home in the middle of a wooded area that you eventually ended up losing because of. So she said, neither of us were wrong. You know what I mean? But she said, you're the direction you wanted to go. You may have survived better than the direction you went. And so she's like, it's not your decision making that you need to be worried about. It's your self-worth in trusting the decisions you make. Oh, I can relate to that. Yeah. I think everyone yeah. else can too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the beauty of talking to someone else that can help guide you. You know, like this counselor didn't heal me or didn't heal my thought process. She guided me and showed me things that I myself didn't see. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, no, it does. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that you call me out and, and help me explain more because well, I, 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 I got to ask the hard questions, you know, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I appreciate that. And it's, <laughs> so that's, that's actually what a healer is like you know, Reiki helped me tremendously. It may not help someone else, you know, it, it may be okay, but it, it may not, you know, be the answer for that person. So then I can help guide them by asking questions by just intuitive guidance that I'm getting of what may help them. So that's what Dow the Turtle is about. And, and I can do all of this remotely, like you and I are talking right now, that's 90% of my business now is talking to people on Zoom. So I, I can be reached, you know, uh, by the computer. So uh, And that's, um, uh, what, what is the site? I, I know the email, but what's, what is the site? It's um, dowtheturtle.com. It's, it's spelled with a, with a T though. It's, yeah. So Dow is T as in Tom, A-O of the turtle. And um, Facebook right now is where I'm more active because of my time. And yeah. that is Al of the Turtle on Facebook and it's T-A-O. Um, okay. My telephone number, because I think you might be asking me that next. <laughs> 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 and that's not intuitive. It's just that we've been talking about. <laughs> is uh, 802-558-1627. Yeah. Okay. Now, Joe, so, so when and how... Mm -hmm. Did you get to start believing in, in, in your choices? When did you get there and how did you get there? Um, so not dwelling on past decisions, but self-reflection and really just paying attention. And you, we had talked about like an inner circle or a core group of people that, that have earned, in, in the words of Brene Brown, that have earned your right or their right to hear your story. So like one of those people would, is my mom, Francine, your Who friend. We love, yeah, that's my buddy, yeah, I know. <laughs> Who says hello, and- Oh, um, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Actually, when is she gonna come on? Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe she come on next week or somehow. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, next week we could, uh, I know that, we, maybe at least audio, if not video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, that'd be fun. I thought that'd be fun. That's awesome, thank you, I, I thought about that too. Um, but anyway, like I would bounce some stuff off my mom and my mom loves me enough to be honest with me. And, and yeah, I, that's, what I, that's what I think I, I, I envision, you know, how you get a feeling about somebody. Yep, uh, yep. I, I feel that she has no uh, filter, but it comes out of love. Right. Yes. And it, it comes out like I, you know, I think no filter and I know you didn't mean it this way. It seems harsh, but my mom will come straight up and you know, it's, you know, my mom always says when, when you learn something from me and my sisters, you know, like when I learned something that they learned at 60 and I learned it at 40, that's a good thing, you know, and, and that's what every generation, man, woman, what have you, they really should be proud that the younger generation is learning a lot faster than we did, you know, and so I came, I came to the realization that I was making the right choices by really making choices. 
I mean, like, oh, screw that one up. But this one was good. You know what I mean? And, right. and it, I leave it. I, that one was not uh, was not, you know, at, at my best, but I learned from it. And here's the next one. And um, yes. knowing that I'm going to do better this time. Yes. And there's no there's no I mean, there are some things that happen, but there's no shame or like no one should think, oh, I didn't make that right decision or God, I really screwed that up because that's how you learn. If everything was perfect, you wouldn't learn. You mean you you're a human learn. being? Are you? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, sorry. I didn't get that facial expression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, it was, yeah. I mean, who, who doesn't make mistakes? Yeah. It's only the people who think they don't make mistakes and who would want to be around them anyway. Yeah, they're not as much fun because it. And I actually had a boss tell me one time that he needed me to screw up more because it, <laughs> I was stretching myself. And I think of that a lot. It's like that's cool. Yeah, it's those are words to live by. So then I like you know I would be going through a situation and be really hard on myself, like something I'm going through now, which isn't a big deal. It's just about work. And my mom's like, you know, Joe, if this happened six months ago, you wouldn't be handling it like you are now. So it's those things when you are, you have those people you can be totally honest with and they can remind you of how far you came. Because I think if you come to a certain point, you not plateau, but the grade is a little bit different. Like when you're healing, it could be like, you know, not 90 degree, but close to. So but she was giving you, you a compliment. Yeah. But she was also not, it, yes, a compliment, but I was also saying like, don't forget where you've been and how far you've come. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. So you, so you've, you've, you've come this far. I, I get what she said when she said you wouldn't have made this six months ago. I, I, I take that as a huge uh, pat on the back. Oh, I'm absolutely. Yeah, loves I, it and to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and my mom and I have like two, two friends that are the same where they, they rejoice in all of my, you know, accomplishments, like even the smallest things. And, you know, I think it's, I'm lucky enough to have a mother like that. And I'm not saying that because she's listening. <laughs> but, oh, is she listening? She was, oh, oh cool. she always listens. She was almost in a panic because she couldn't get on. And I'm not sure if it was <laughs> you, buddy. So. <laughs> well, well, what you just described, Joe, is you just you described uh, a family member that cares about you or a true friend. Yes. What, that's what you just yes. described. Absolutely. Yep. And Mr. Mr. Producer is uh, yelling at me because people are writing in. Mr. Great. Producer, what you got, man? And, and I'm going to come back to that. I'll remember. <laughs> I'll come back to that. And let me put my fan on. Hold on. Mr. Producer. Awesome. So we have Marilyn from Virginia. Uh, I believe she goes, how do you feel people could best motivate themselves? Wow. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, I get, so let me just one second. What comes to mind? Yeah. Is, is the lower fruit, you know, it's, you know, sometimes when you have a, a list of things you want to accomplish, even a to-do list, when you, you do those things, you know, when you pick the lower fruit, fruit, something that you can accomplish, accomplish well and quickly and continue doing that and going up your list, you gain momentum. So, and, and you know that you're not always going to stay motivated. There are times where you're going to be going along, chugging along, and then all of a sudden there's one little blip. And you're just going to, you're going to go back to the, oh, you know, I'm tired of doing this and know that that's okay. Cause sometimes you do need to just step, take a breath, regroup, make sure you're going in the direction you want to go or accomplishing what you want to accomplish. And then go back for that low lying fruit and do it again. And just the motivation is really just not beating yourself up and not saying I have to do this, but I want to accomplish this. So that means I, I want to accomplish, not need to accomplish this thing, but you want to accomplish. It's, it's, it goes back to my use of words and the energy behind words. You know, there's nothing wrong with us. We don't need to fix anything in us. However, we want to heal and grow, you know, so it's really, you know, think about the words you're using. And instead of saying, I need to do this because I want to be here. It's like, no, I want to do this thing because I want to be here. So it's always a forward, yeah. Is that, would that be a time, the times you were just talking about, uh, would that be a good time to do meditation, to, to do the breathing exercises? Every time is a good time to do meditation. Okay. Every, truly, it's, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's self-care. So that is supporting yourself to do what you want to do. So it is, it's coming up with those practices of even just a few minutes, um, 
in, you know, when you go to bed, you're going to go to bed and say, you know what, tomorrow's going to be a, a, the day I need, or be, you know, um, I'm going to be whatever, like a, a positive affirmation, not a, I must to do this, but you know what, tomorrow's going to be a good day. And you wake up in the morning and you're like, this is the day. And saying this is the day is, is really even just saying to the universe, all right, this is the day. What do you have for me today? Right. In a positive way, you know, and I think that's simpler. Like I say a prayer, but that's who I am. It might be simpler for people to start out with just those two sentences before you go to bed. So tomorrow's going to be a great day. And then when you wake up, today's the day. And then you get into that habit and you can build upon that habit. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you for that. All right, Mr. Yeah. Producer. And, and the gratitude works the same way with that, right? Exactly. Gratitude. Yes. Yes. That's where you go. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mr. Producer, what you got over there, my man? We have Mary from New York. Hi, Mary. And this is kind of a long one. So um, yep. here we go. She wrote in, uh, my boyfriend is very secretive because of his toxic ex. Um, oh, He's very good to me and has never cheated, but sometimes I go snooping and see how friendly he is with his female friends. I worry he'll cheat on me if he does. Sorry. I worry he'll cheat on me if he hasn't done it already. I don't know if I'm self-sabotaging or if it's my intuition. What should I do? And do you have services that combat insecurity? Well, good question. I'm sorry you're going through that, but. Yeah, Mary, I am sorry you're going through that. And thank you for trusting me with that. Um, Wow. Sorry. So in just hearing that, my whole body is, has tightened up. Me um, too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so I think I could, I'm feeling your mom, what your mom would say here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Mary, like not, not uh, making light of this at all, but when, when that happens, I can only imagine how you must be feeling. And yes, there are things that you can do to help. And I, I can't comment directly on the, the, the man you're involved with or the person you're involved with. However, I can say that, and this is without any judgment at all, but, but look and ask yourself, be curious with yourself is why, why are you doing those actions? Why do you feel the need to do, to look into to things? Snoop, right. Thank you. Yeah. I was trying to look. Yeah. But to, to snoop, honestly, I should put it right where it's at. Um, you know, why are you snooping? And it's, it's, I can't imagine it's because that's who you are. Like, have you done that in the past? Like, this is where curiosity and asking yourself questions comes in. You know, um, part of our topic today was asking questions to learn more about yourself. And the way I was thinking about it this past week is I have a hard time doing something for myself. So I'm getting better at it. But I thought, you know what? What is it that I look for in a partner? what I look for in a friend, what I look for in a coworker, and then turn it, am I that person? Am I doing that? And, you know, Mary, going back to your question, I really, I, I think that a start for you, A, would naturally be to please get in touch with me because um, this is something that I've been through. I can I can guide you and, um, and help you. And, um, but it's really just be curious with yourself. There's nothing you can do, say, or anything in reference to your partner. Right. The only thing you can control is yourself and ask, do you like being this person that needs to do the snooping that you needs to be on? It's not your, there's a reason that you're feeling insecure. It's going to say there's it's a reason. It's her intuition, isn't it? That thing you're I always talking spot about. Spot on. Yep. There's a reason. You know, people don't give themselves credit. And I didn't. I literally looked. I walked past a partner that was looking who what I thought on Facebook. He had a picture of a woman up and I assumed it was Facebook and it wasn't, it was like match.com or something in my gut. I knew it wasn't right. I knew that it wasn't what I was thinking, but I didn't trust my intuition. And that you had asked, you know, um, Casey, how do I know now my decisions are correct? Because I look back after we broke up and I'm like, son of a, you know, yeah. The cool thing, which I didn't think at the time, but the universe put me in the same place where they were. We went to this burger joint in, in Vermont. My friends were taking me out for my 50th birthday and we were coming back from the trip. And there he was with the woman. Oh, God. He was looking at. And at the time I was like, ah, oh, devastation. And now I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Right. Yes. Thank you. I don't that was confirmation. That back anymore. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's my language. And well, no, and it validated that what I I 
thought when I saw that picture originally was correct. And, and that's what Mary needs to be curious about now. Like, why are we, these fights coming up? And why am I reaching out to someone about this? We all know what we need to do. We just need someone to help us be strong enough and give us the tools to do it. I love so, you said that. I love you said that because, yeah. you know, we don't, we don't know uh, Mary, but there's a reason why she feels that way. Right. And exactly. And just like, just like Joe was saying, uh, if it does turn out to be true, then you thank you not be mad. Right. Yep. And I always say, I always live by, even at my worst is, I will not have someone pay for the sins of my past partners, you know, oh, like that's good. Right. And, and that's what Mary, like Mary, do you deserve to pay for the sins of that toxic relationship? Should that partner have healed himself or herself, whomever from that toxic relationship before getting into a relationship with you, you know, and what do you deserve? So, and that's the, that's the kind of help is just, is helping a person put something into context because sometimes you feel like you're so deeply in love that you'll, you'll fight anything. And I'll be honest with you. I have big opinions about love. I love love. I love people, but love isn't everything. I love my, I love my former husband. I can, I'm not married to him for the past 11 years because that person wasn't what was best in my best interest in my growth. So Got you. I understand. Thank you for your honesty. And Mary, thank you for, you, for yours too. And, and yeah, good, thank luck, you, Mary. good luck to you. It's uh, uh, how does Mary get a hold of you if, uh, if she chooses to? Absolutely. You can text me or call me at 802-558-1627. And even if you want to call for a consult and I can, you know, I, there's no charge in the first call just to, to talk to see if you're comfortable. So awesome. Awesome. Good luck to you, Mary. Mr. Producer, what else you got, buddy? We got time for another one? Yeah, we have time for one more. Okay. We have Joel from Montana. And I believe he goes, I've been very sad because of the holidays. And my mm -hmm. friends have noticed they've been trying to get me out of the house and I've kind of been avoiding them because of it. Just recently, mm -hmm. they started to get upset that I haven't been around. Not only do I feel bad, but now I feel worse because it's affecting my friends. Mm -hmm. What should I do? That's, that's a compassionate guy right there. You took the words right out of my mouth, Casey. You're incredibly compassionate, which is why you have friends that care so much. So that is that is the, the bit of light on all that. And I'm going to go back to what my grandmother said, Joel. You know, the holidays are great if everything else in your life is is great as well or OK. And um, and I hear you in reference to being sad about the, the holidays. And I think what you and your friends deserve is to know what it is you need. You know, that they're, they're coming to you with what, what would help them. And so you, if you very clearly say, you know, talk to them and say, Hey, I appreciate you guys for caring about me so much that that means huge amounts to me. Mm -hmm. And this is what will help me get through this and let them know the things, even if it's like, you know, Hey, I can't go out into a big crowd, you know, but maybe we can just grab a pizza and come back to my place and mm -hmm. Or, you know, so really be clear, clear to them, A, that you appreciate them and it'll be fair for you and them, so you both can get through what you need to get through. Um, I hope that that helped. Or Yeah, that's, that's yeah. great. That's great advice. And what I was going to say is you just brought it full circle from um, your lesson today, not called lesson or uh, your topic today, that just came full circle because it comes down to what you want and what you mm -hmm. need. So, uh, and that's a great ending. I could not uh, I don't know, producer, did you pick the, that one uh, out of the rest? I, know, I, I, I see a bunch of writing, but I don't, I, I don't know. I'm sure you have more over there, but you know, I can't read that. Um, but uh, Joe Reichel, everybody, Dow with a turtle. Uh, Joe, take us out. Anything you want us to think about until we speak next time. I hope it's uh, with my friend. Uh, maybe we can three-way it or somehow and get her a conference yeah. or something. But no, uh, that's, that's completely up to you. Yeah. I would love at least, at least audio just to say hello and you know what happened. That'd have be you. cool. I would I'll enjoy that. that. Yeah, I'll ask mom. Um, you know, the one th I the recently when I'm signing off, I sign off uh, all of my emails and things saying, I hope the holidays bring you everything you need and want. And I, you know, say the same to you guys, both you and Gil and all the listeners. 
that I really just hope that, you know, life in general brings everyone what they need and want. And, um, and our next show will be the 21st, um, Tuesday, the 21st. So we're not next week, but um, yeah. And, and if there's something that anyone wants to, uh, it will be my, my last show right now with you guys. So um, yeah. So if there's anything that someone wants to touch on, I'd love to, or I can just come on and do what I do, but uh, it's awesome. It's okay. Awesome. awesome. Hey, that's my buddy. That's Joe Reichel, everybody. Dow with a turtle. And I uh, thank you. Great show. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the podcast business news network. For nearly 2000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicapped accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.